The Sharp Edge on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Mazic Seeds. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to The Sharp Edge. We are over in Tiverton, Ontario today, catching up with, as usual, with Greg Stewart from Mazic Seeds. Greg, how's it going? Good, Burn. How are you? I'm pretty good. Now, today, we are going to catch up with Kervin Horst, and we're going to talk silage. Now, Greg, why is Kervin on the sharp edge? So, we're here, sort of on the west coast of Ontario, on a beautiful dairy farm, nice silage day, and you see all the investment in the corn silage crop, and of course, you see all the investment in the dairy farm, mm -hmm. and it's sort of intriguing to think that one of the key pieces that drives that operation forward is the quality of the silage and the quality of the silage often comes down to how good a job you can do of building and packing that bunk. So that's what we're here to see today. Let's roll with Kervin Horst. Hey Kervin, thanks for joining us today on this uh, beautiful October day. You're cutting silage up here and near Tiverton. Tell us how long you've been doing this silage cutting filling operation of yours. Yeah, we've been doing it for about 10 years plus. Right. And uh, when we look at this operation, you know, you consider how much is invested in the corn crop, how much is invested in the dairy herd, and, and the quality of the silage being really uh, important. Uh, they get a guy like you in to cut the silage and to uh, pack the bunk. Yep. Tell us a little bit about how much care you take into packing the bunk. Yeah, so we, we try to do our best in the, on the pile and chopping as well, but packing is very important. It's the most important job to get the pile packed right. And, right, right. Um, so I see you're in this bunk here today, you've got one tractor running. Now it does have sort of an extra packer unit on the back. Tell us a little bit about that uh, three-point hitch extra weight machine on the back there. Yeah, so we put a Spanger nine-wheel packer on. Um, it adds about five ton to the to the unit, and we just find we get better um, pounds per inch. You can see when it's running in the pack, it obviously is able to deliver more pressure right to the surface of the uh, of the bunk. Right? That's right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And and so in the in the uh, in the scheme of things, the packer on the back allows you to apply more pressure to the silage than what the tire would on the tractor, right? That's what we find, yeah. It also helps level um, level the pile out as well. Right. So. Now, we talk about inflation pressure in tires, and when we're running tillage equipment or pulling a planter, we're always trying to back the pressure off on the, on the tire to reduce soil compaction. Do you actually inflate your tires uh, a little higher? We when do. uh when you're when you're running it in the bunk yeah we do yeah we we'd run around 30 pounds okay on the tractors and you'd never run 30 pounds in those tires if it was pulling a planter no it's pretty rough yeah yeah, yeah. right on cool so like i mentioned this is early october uh you know we're getting near the end of silage harvesting how many more days of silage cutting do you have to do uh probably about seven more days of seven chocolate. more days yeah. And so the moisture in this crop right behind you here today, what are we, what are we running for, for silage moisture here today? It's running around 60% moisture. And you know that because? Uh, we got a harvest lab on our harvesters. So, so that's an NIR machine that actually tells you the moisture of the silage while you're cutting. That's right. Yeah, yeah. pretty nice tool. Yeah, right? we like it. Yeah. And so you're at 60% today. As silage gets drier, do you get more worried or attentive to the job that's happening at the bunk in terms of packing. Yeah, I would say so. We would act, we would try to get an extra tractor on the pile if, and I always like having an extra tractor on the pile if possible. If possible. But uh, especially when things get drier, it's more important. So, Kervin, uh, you're up in the bunk tractor now. What are the things running through your head that you think are most important about doing a good job of uh, of, of packing a good bunk? Yeah. So I would. Try to keep my sides high or higher so that um, I'm not falling into the wall and hitting the plastic if there's plastic there. Um, I would also try to watch for any low areas so that we don't got water sitting on top of the bunk and so water can all flow off. Right, right. And then of course keeping the slice as thin as you can as you as you uh, as you're packing. That's right. And so in this operation here today, uh, what's the do you, do you ever have to worry about slowing down the cutting 
so that you don't deliver too much silage that your tractor can't handle it in terms of uh, in terms of building the proper bunk. Right. Yeah. Sometimes we got two radios on the tractors, so we can communicate back and forth on how fast it's coming in, whether to slow down a bit or speed yeah, up. Keep everyone on the same page. Yeah. Moving uh, forward, do you use the same operator? Like there's, there's some skill, I'm assuming, with, with doing a good job of building and packing a bunk. Do you use the same operator in that pack tractor all the time? Very most of the time I do the packing. Oh, you do the packing. I have very most the, of the time. The most important job left for you. <laughs> I guess so, yeah. <laughs> Um, All right. I do have some others that I'm training on as well. Okay, yeah. right. So you've got the, the harvester is obviously much more money invested in the harvester than in the packing tractor, but you realize that the packing tractor is, uh, is, the, is sort of the key part of the operation, right? That's right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And so we often, when we see in the internet or, or, or talk about building bunks, we say, well, you know, you've got to keep the amount of silage that you're packing uh, you know, down to six inches or less than six inches. Uh, I'm assuming that's one of the things you're good at is trying to build that wedge in the bunk and keep the amount of silage that you deliver at any one time into that thin slice. That's right. Yeah, we try to keep it long and narrow and yet not too long so you can keep up with pushing and all that. But right. Yeah. Right, right. Cool, cool. And so uh, seven more days of cutting silage. It's been a good fall for you this year so far? It's been perfect. It's been a perfect year. Yeah. And, and interestingly, grain, the silage is not drying down too crazy fast yeah. that makes it even more of a problem to do a good job. It's been really good up till now with not drying down too fast for getting harvesting done. Yeah. Now with the frost, it's coming it, on quicker. It's, it's going to come on quicker now. Yeah. Hey, Kervin, thanks so much for being with us today. Hey, you're welcome. So there you have it. Greg, one thing I learned watching this was, is the pride that Kervin takes in his work. Yeah, absolutely. So Kervin runs out of Teeswater, uh, Trinal Farms, but covers a pretty big area in terms of cutting uh, silage and uh, building bunks. So yeah, it was clear that this is, this is important to try to get it done right. Yeah, and one thing I learned as well is he can really measure how well he's doing and what kind of job he's doing. And that probably drives his attention to detail because he knows that there's a dairy farmer that's particularly keen on how well that feed feeds his cows, right? There's probably a nutritionist involved that's assessing the quality of the silage. There may be actually a guy that comes out and does a bunk right. audit that checks the density and the fermentation across the face of the bunk. So lots of reasons uh, for, for Kervin to do a good job because if you're gonna be a sharp dairy producer, the bunk is key to having high quality feed. Yeah. And that's how you end up on the sharp edge, right Greg? Right on.